All right, so let's get into tonight's presentation, how to make stock trading a career. So overview, I'm going to get a little bit of my background, talk about what is active trading, the concept behind it, and uh, that'll lead us into what strategy trading is, and I'll give you a little bit to think about when we think about strategy trading. I'm going to show you my day trading process, how I create a day trading watch list, and um, from that we'll catch a few of the trades that came up today. We'll also look at the swing trading process, and then I'll talk a little bit about the June um, training that's coming up here for those that want to take it to the next level. Uh, today was a very quiet day in the market. It was actually the lowest volume of uh, stock traded since the day before Christmas, and that day was only a half-day trading session. So today was very low volume. Everyone waiting to see what Janet Yellen says tomorrow. She is doing a, um, a speech. She's actually receiving an, an award at Harvard, and she's on a panel with uh, Ben Bernanke and some other guy I'd never heard of um, doing a speech tomorrow. And so the market is just waiting for that. Plus, of course, it's going to be a long weekend in the U.S., and that has many people probably away for the long weekend uh, heading out early. So it was very quiet trading today, but there were a couple of individual stocks that actually made some pretty good moves, and I'll show you um, how I find them and, and what they did. All right. So my background, I've been trading for 25, 26 years. Um, I started when I was 19 as a student at the University of Calgary, paid my way through school, didn't really necessarily make a ton of money, but did all right, I guess. And then um, at one point I turned $30,000 into half a million dollars in about three months, and that gave me the capital base to build the stock scores website and um, um, you know, be able to trade for a living. I developed some proprietary tools and indicators, which I'll be showing you tonight. Those are for TradeStation, but they're also part of the tools on stock scores. My whole concept was I don't want to do what everyone else is doing, and I've got that quote at the bottom there. If you do what everyone else does, you will get what everyone else gets, and that's average. I don't want to be average. I want to beat the market, and so I don't use commonly used technical analysis indicators. I don't use fundamentals. That's what everybody else is using. I've develop my own uh, methods and tools and I think that's what gives me an edge. I started teaching my method uh, about 15 years ago and the thing I really love about trading is I can do it from anywhere. I've been uh, traveling around a lot in the last year, um, spent six months in Hawaii and then now I'm in Whistler where I'm you know mountain biking and skiing and that kind of thing. So it's a great lifestyle if you can do it. And anyone can do it. Trading is not intellectually difficult. It's emotionally challenging. It requires good focus, good discipline, but so do a lot of things. If you want to do well in anything, you've got to work hard, be determined, and you can make it happen. What I can do for you is shorten your learning curve. I've made every mistake in the book twice, <laughs> probably more times, and still make mistakes. I've been trading for a long time. I still make mistakes. But because of that background, of, of making mistakes trading for a long time, I can spot those same mistakes in people very quickly and usually help help people along if, if they have that aspiration of becoming a, a professional trader or even to, for people that want to do it on the part-time. So what is active trading? Well, my approach to active trading is to focus on liquid stocks and really focus on abnormal behavior and chart patterns. So we've talked a lot about those two concepts, abnormal behavior and patterns, in recent webinars. If you have missed those webinars, they are on my YouTube channel. I'll have my YouTube details up later. Um, I want to take advantage of breakdowns and market efficiency. The market or, or um, you know, financial theory tells us that you cannot beat the market because it is efficient. That means it prices in all available information and therefore, according to theory, and that's what you learn in business school, um, therefore, according to theory, you cannot beat the market. Um, there are people that beat the market, and in studying that and, and my own trading, I have found that the only way to beat the market is to take advantage of breakdowns in market efficiency. Now, market efficiency assumes two things. It assumes that people are rational, and it assumes that the spread of information is, is equitable, is fair, that everyone gets information at the same time. We know, just 
common sense will say that people are quite emotional, particularly when it comes to money. And because they are emotional, that creates opportunity. And some of my strategies are focused just on emotional opportunity. I also know that the stock market is not fair, that some people get better information than others. The market reacts very quickly to new information, particularly with computers acting in the market these days. But fortunately, when those computers or the well-informed are acting in the market, they leave a trail for us to follow. And so my approach to the market is to take advantage of emotion and use abnormality and patterns to uncover situations where the market is trading on information that is not widely known. That's, that's basically how I approach the market. I sometimes will trade a change in momentum, which is largely a shift in emotion. And I look for entry points that offer a strong reward for risk trade-off. I like situations where my downside, my potential loss, is much less than my upside if the trade works. I do not expect to make money on every trade, but when I make money, I expect that my profits will outweigh my losses. And that's something what we talked about last time, and it's a very important concept, that concept of um, uh, expected value and you know having strategies that have a positive expected value. So that leads me to my next point, which is I am a strategy trader. I do not trade on tips. I do not listen to so-called market experts. I don't watch financial television or read the newspaper. I don't really go to websites looking for information. I simply trade market activity using strategies. I have developed a set of rules for when to buy, how much to buy, when to sell, and when to take a loss. And from that, I can test those rules to come up with something called an equity curve. Now, an equity curve is what strategy traders use to determine whether their strategy works or not. And essentially what we do is we take our rules and we test them over a large sample of trades. And from that test, we can determine if that strategy is profitable or not. Now, that does not guarantee that we will be profitable because our emotions are an important part of trading. And oftentimes our emotions get in the way of the rules. You know, we can have rules for when to buy, but if we don't follow those rules because of our emotional attachment to money, well, then we're really not following the rules, are we? We're not trading the strategy. So what I did, um, I guess it was late last year, is I ran a little test. I was actually um, doing this live, uh, I think day by day over the course of a month, where each day I would highlight the... Um, trades that met the requirements of one of my strategies. I think it was the intraday pullback strategy. And each day I would say, okay, well, these were the trades that met all the rules and we would put all of the results into a spreadsheet and track the results. Not every trade made money. I, I don't remember exactly, but I think it was around 65 or 70% of the trades were profitable. Um, but then at the end of the month, I was able to plot the total profitability over time as it went through the month. And so the result is this equity curve. So you'll see at the top there it says $1,000 risk tolerance. So that meant that the expected loss when the trade didn't work was $1,000. And then we just followed a certain set of exit rules to determine when to sell or when to cover the short position. And you know each trade, you can see the symbols along the bottom. That's not all the symbols, that's just some of them. Um, but basically, you know, if the first trade on RMGN made $2,000, well, that's where the curve starts. And you can see that it generally was going up, but there were periods, you know, maybe six, seven, eight trades in a row sometimes where the equity curve would not go up. And that's trading. I mean, the trading market um, or, or the trading business is not always 100% uh, the same every day. There are days when it it, things work great and there's days when it doesn't work great. This week has been a pretty lousy, quiet week because you've got this Fed decision, you've got a holiday coming up, that sort of thing. And so the market tends to run in spurts. There will be a period when a particular strategy works great and there's a period when it goes quiet. So anyway, you can see that from this curve. You can see at the first part of the month, the curve was pretty steep and then it kind of got flat for a while, and then it got steep again, and then at the end of the month, it got flat again. And that's quite typical, actually. Um, market act 
action tends to quiet down at the end of the month. Um, because in many cases, uh, brokerages will make sure that their clients get on side on their margin around the end of the month. And there's a lot of month end selling pressure because people have to um, clear their margin. It's not as big of a factor as it used to be because so much of the volume today is computer driven as opposed to human driven, but it still is something I see at the end of the month, the action doesn't tend to be as good. So what I wanna show you now is my process for creating a watch list and how I monitor that watch list for signals. All right, so I'm gonna jump into a trading platform called TradeStation. TradeStation is um, nothing to do with me. It's an American broker. If you are living in the U.S. or many parts of the world, you can have an account with TradeStation and use them as your broker. People in Canada are not allowed to have brokerage accounts in the U.S. And so we're at quite a disadvantage, I would say, because the tools available from U.S. brokers are far superior to the tools available to uh, Canadians from Canadian brokers. So it's something that's a bit of a sore spot with me. Um, you know, I believe that it's protectionist and that uh, Canadian brokers really don't do enough to develop new tools because there's less competition and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, that's a different topic for another day. What I wanna show you today is how I would build my watch list to monitor for some of these different strategies. So when I'm day trading, I have a few strategies I do. I have something called an intraday pullback, a superhero strategy, a wave strategy, one that's called a worm. Um, and then I have some swing trading strategies. My most favorite is something called the simple swing. So when I'm doing the um, intraday pullbacks and superheroes, uh, and again, intraday pullbacks was the, was the strategy that drove that equity curve, um, the first step is to build a watch list. And so I've got a process built in TradeStation where step one, I run a scan that I've built in TradeStation. And when you're my student, you get the settings for that scan. I'm gonna copy all of the stocks that came up from that scan, and I'm gonna paste them in something called Radar Screen. Radar Screen is kind of like an Excel spreadsheet. You can see it here. I've got all the stocks that met the requirements of the scan, but I still have to do some other tests. And so you can see there are a whole bunch of symbols but I now have to get rid of most of them. And in this particular step, I'm getting rid of the ones that aren't liquid enough. So I'm gonna grab the ones that are very actively traded. And this is a process that I start doing about um, maybe five minutes after the market opens. And then I uh, monitor those symbols for entry points. Uh, sorry, I'm on the simple swing. <laughs> I'm on the wrong tab here. Let me just jump over to my superhero scan, uh, it does the same thing. So I grab my list of stocks and I put them into this radar screen, which calculates for abnormal volume. Now the stock scores market scan has a filter for abnormal volume, but it doesn't operate in real time. Um, the trade station does this in real time. So when I'm day trading, I like to use trade station because it is in real time. You know, I have to pay $300 a month for this. So it's a cost of doing business, but this tool is extremely valuable for finding the stocks to trade. And on any particular day, I'll have between five and 30 stocks on my watch list. Um, today, there were 13 stocks that met my initial requirement for abnormal volume and liquidity. I now monitor those stocks through the trading day looking for entry signals. And as I said earlier, I've, I've created my own proprietary indicators for TradeStation that look for certain things that I like to see. And I'm not gonna explain what those things are because that's kind of my secret sauce, but you can see on the big chart on the screen that there are pink dots and blue dots and red squares and green squares, and there's even some little white dots on there. Each of those is an indicator that I've coded or I've, I've had someone program for me um, to look for certain things. So the intraday pullback, for example, looks for blue dots in certain patterns. So the first blue dot on this particular chart, and this chart, I'll blow this up here. This chart is a, a two day, two minute chart. So each one of these candles represents two minutes of trading. And I'm looking for a certain pattern to occur. And that pattern happened right here. And so I then 
identify my entry point. The blue line is my buy price. The yellow line is my support. And the red line would be a hard stop loss, although I may exit sooner than that. Now you can see that from that point, the stock went up fairly nicely through the day. And there was no exit signal on this particular stock until the close. Uh, because with day trades, we would just exit at the close. So I'm going to just walk you through a little bit of the calculation here. Now I don't know if you can see the detail because it's quite small. But the entry price, which is at the blue line, was $14.58. And our, our risk management calculation was... Uh, with a stop loss or, or a support price at $14.07. So if I'm buying at $14.58 and I'm going to sell if it goes down to $14.07 or at least that's how I size my position, then my risk per share is $0.51. Cents. So just for simplicity, let's call it $0.50 cents a share of risk. That means if I buy one share, it's going to cost me $14.58. And if it doesn't work out, I sell it at $14.07 and I lose 50 cents. Obviously, I'm not going to buy one share because I would never make any money. The commission alone is going to be $5 to enter this trade. So let's say I buy 1,000 shares. 1,000 shares cost me uh, $14,580. And if I'm wrong, I stand to lose $500, assuming I have my stop at $14.07. So now let's think a little bit about the capital required to buy 1,000 shares. Because when you're day trading, uh, there are brokers in Canada and in the U.S. and all over the place that will give you three to one margin. What that means is that you only have to put up one third of the capital to make that trade. So if you want to buy 1,000 shares of this stock, you would only need a little less than $5,000. Now, if it doesn't work out, your $5,000 of capital, you could suffer a $500 loss. And so you have to ask yourself, am I willing to lose $500, which is 10% of the capital risked? Um, and that's part of the risk management stuff that I teach everyone how to do and where the appropriate levels are and that sort of thing. But let's just go through the example. Assuming we bought 1,000 shares costing $14,580, we would need about $5,000 of capital to do that trade. And the exit on this trade was at the close, let's call it $17.26, or let's call it $17.25. Okay, so each one of these lines on the chart, these green lines, represent reward for risk. So at the first green line where my mouse is right now, that is the first reward for risk line. At that point, I am earning $500 for the risk I took. So I'm risking $500 to make $500. So that's a risk reward line of one. The next line up is the second line from our entry point. At that point, I would be making $1,000. So once it crossed through $15.60, I'm up $1,000. Okay. Now remember, I've only put up $5,000 of capital. So at that point, I'm up 20% on my risked capital. So at the end of the day, the stock had gone up one, two, three, four, five, and a little bit more. Let's call it 5.3 times risk. So if I risked $500, that would mean that I'm up 5.3 times 500, which is $2,650. On a trade where I needed $5,000 of capital, I have a profit of $2,650. And my risk in doing that was potentially losing five, maybe six hundred dollars. Okay, so hopefully you understand that. It's a very important concept of trading, and it kind of shows you the uh, the amount of capital required and that sort of thing. <clears throat> now, when I'm trading, uh, trades like this are great. Uh, earning five to one risk reward is is great. Uh, we every once in a while we'll get a trade that earns ten, fifteen to one. Most of the trades make us one or two to one or lose us one or two to one. And as I talked about in the last webinar, out of 10 trades, I expect that, you know, eight of them are going to be small winners or small losers. And only two of them out of 10 
are going to be bigger winners, somewhere between 5 and 10 risk reward. And those are the ones where we make our money. And so 80% of the time, we're just kind of grinding it out, hoping for one of the 2 out of 10 to come along. So today here we had a uh, one of the 2 out of 10. I wouldn't say a huge winner. 5 out of 10 is, or 5 RR is not huge. But we can go through some of the trades from today. And I'll just... Uh, quickly highlight whether there was an entry signal on them or not. So on this particular stock, NERV, see there's a pink dot right there. So that signals a, a different strategy called a superhero. And this particular trade uh, hit a maximum risk reward of four to one. It would have earned us two to one. And I'm just, I'm not explaining why tonight. That's something I teach in my course material. I just want to give you a sense of the money that was possible for today. Uh, Dollar Tree was another big mover but the problem with Dollar Tree is it had a huge gap on the open and so I really I mean there was an entry signal on this one but I would have passed on it because of the big gap big gaps tend to be riskier and so I wouldn't have taken any trades on that one uh, CPRT had a okay entry here again pretty big gap so you know I probably would have shied away from it if you took that trade you might have got stopped out or broken even so it didn't turn out to be great and as I go through this list, and there's only 13 stocks on the watch list today, but I'm looking for certain patterns. There we see a blue dot. There was a pink dot here, but honestly, you wouldn't have been able to um, catch it that quickly because it didn't meet some of our requirements before that. But let's call this one. This was kind of a superhero trade as well. It topped out at 4 to 1, would have made you 2 to 1. So, so far, you know, we had a, a gain of 5, a gain of two, another gain of two, and maybe a loss of two, so we're up seven. And that's how trading works. Um, you just sort of calculate your uh, profitability over a large number of trades. You don't try to um, make money on every trade. You don't judge yourself one trade at a time. You're just saying, I'm going to play this game. I'm going to do it 100 times, and hopefully after 100 trades, I make some money. All right, another entry signal in this ALNY, it was a few candles after the blue dot because we had to wait for a certain pattern to build, but this one made us uh, two to one. So you remember I said you have a lot of one to one, two to one winners, and every once in a while you get a bigger winner. Hopefully you're getting the point here. Uh, this was a good worm trade. I, I'm not going to talk about that strategy too much tonight, but different process for that, but a worm entry on um, uh, Hewlett Packard earned three to one by the close. So even though it was a really slow day, as I go down my watch list here, I actually see quite a few decent trades. Costco was a loser. It was an intraday pullback after this blue dot, and you would have been stopped out on that one. So there's a loser. And as I said earlier, I expect to lose 30, sometimes even 40% of the time. Uh, I don't really see anything good on this one. Um, this one didn't really have adequate volume. As I go down the list, it's questionable whether they'll have strong enough volume. Uh, there was an okay entry signal here. It ended up being maybe a break even, slight loss. So there you go. We've gone through, well, one more to go. We've gone through a bunch of stocks that were on the watch list. Uh, this one had a decent entry right here. This was a white dot. Whoops. This was a white dot entry. I'll just give you the RR for this one. So this one earned an RR of 0.5. Yeah, 0.5. So going through these 13 stocks, I'm going to guess that if you were perfect and you traded like a robot and you didn't miss anything, you should have made 7, 8 RR for the day. Do we make 7 or 8 RR for the day every day? Are we always perfect? I'm never perfect. You know, if, if I can get half of what I should have made in the day, I'm happy. And today, you know, if you picked up on that one FLXN, well, then you got a lot of your move because that was a five to one um, but anyway I'm trying to be realistic about how this all works you know it, it's it takes good focus it's not intellectually difficult I mean these reasons for buying these stocks are pretty obvious once you learn the rules um, but it takes practice and uh, if you don't practice if you're not focused if you're not disciplined you're gonna get nowhere all right so let's go back to the presentation I just wanted to give you a rough idea of the process and kind of how my day sh shapes up if I'm day trading. So ultimately, I'm looking for, you know, entry signals. Here's a, a entry signal from earlier 
uh, this week on well, last week, I guess on the 19th of May, it had a intraday pullback play and I've highlighted there with the RR lines, how that stock moved up and this one earned a two to one reward per risk. Now, when we're creating the day trading watch list, it's a step by step process that I showed you. Of course, when I teach people, I go into much more detail about what you're doing at each step, but hopefully you get the, the idea here. It's not, um, it's not difficult. It's, it doesn't require a lot of expertise with programming or with um, understanding finance or anything like that. It's just a process and it takes practice. You have to be fast. That's more than anything is it just requires speed. You know, I was talking to one of my students today and I was working with them on just how to be faster doing it. You know, trying to avoid using your mouse as, pos as much as possible because using a mouse is slow. You want to use keystrokes as much as you can and copy and paste with control C, control V, that sort of thing. Once you have your watch list, you're just reacting to alerts. On this screen right here, I am reacting to these numbers that are in this screen right here. And I'm looking for big numbers in this one or this wave up indicator having a trigger. All of those things are indicators that I've created. They don't come with TradeStation. I've had them programmed using the math that I've created and, and built, okay? So let's talk a little bit now about swing trading. Swing trading is less demanding of your time. It does not require you to be as fast. Um, you don't have to use TradeStation. You can use stock scores for swing trading, but I really believe you will make more money if you are using TradeStation to swing trade. But again, TradeStation comes with a cost. I always tell my students, you know, don't start out using TradeStation until you're good at the process and good at seeing the patterns and, and you understand what to look for because you've got to pay $300 a month for TradeStation. So you don't want to jump to it until you're ready to make trading a, a business, even if you're not going to do it every day. You know, you, you can justify the cost of TradeStation if you're only trading one or two days a week or even only trading for an hour or two a day because it does give you some, some good opportunities. So we're going to use TradeStation, but again, you can also use the Stock Scores website. Uh, we just vary the way the strategies work. And we look for something called action candles. So let's, um, so just incidentally, I sent out a, um, an email, I think on Tuesday, to the people who expressed an interest in, in some of the courses coming up in June. And I just said, you know, here's some of the uh, swing trades that I did from yesterday into today. So I think that was on Tuesday because I bought all these on Monday. And I, I promised I would go through some of these at this webinar tonight. So uh, this is a screen capture from my trading platform. It shows the money that I made on Tuesday. Uh, you can see that I had uh, six trades. Five of them were profitable, but two of them were barely profitable. Um, but three of them were decent sized profitability. And you can also see that the loss wasn't very big. You know, my one loss was a loss of $240, where my biggest profit was $2,025. So my biggest profit was eight times the size of my loss. And that's good trading. That's good risk reward management. Okay. So I'll just um, take out my little pen tool here and just sort of walk you through, um, you know, why I bought these things on, I guess it wasn't Monday. It must have been Tuesday. Uh, I'm looking at this chart. Yeah. Because I the, the entry signal on Gilead was there. And I have an indicator, which I'll show you in a moment, that highlights that. And then I sold it um, somewhere on the following day. And that was, a, you know, obviously a big move. Uh, another one. Okay, so Baidu I bought right here. And a little worried going into the close. It was kind of right near my stop there. But again, the next day it had a nice pop. And I actually sold it very close to the high, probably right about there was my um, my get out point. Following day it went a little higher. I probably could have done better if I was patient, but uh, you know that big move in a short amount of time, I was sort of happy to take my profits because I did expect a pullback and that's exactly what happened. On Disney, I bought it right here and it actually went through my stop near the end of the day. Not I didn't have a hard stop, so I decided I was gonna sell it the following morning. I got a lucky uh, you know jump the next morning, so I was able to get out a little higher. Had I w held it for another day, I would have made a little more money uh, instead of taking a loss. But I, you know, I trade with discipline. I, I work a strategy, 
I have a set of rules and I don't care if I make money on every trade. I don't worry about, you know, if I would have, could have, should have made more money on a trade. I'm just trading a numbers game. All right. And that's the process. So just jumping back in a trade station, if I go into this other um, screen here, I, again, I run a scan. I run this scan called gainers. Very simple, similar process to the day trading scan. I copy those symbols. I paste them into this screen. I grab ones that meet a certain requirement um, and I copy them. I'm not going to do all of them because it takes too long. And then I paste them in here and I look for something called an action candle. And action candles are the little pink dots on the chart. If you've taken my course any time in the last, I don't know, year or two, you should have the action candle indicator. And when I see an action candle, you can see there was a pink dot there. All of these stocks, these stocks um, that have a number right here, all of those stocks made an action candle on the opening candle of the day. And I then inspect those charts to see if they have the right kind of chart pattern. So FLXN, okay pattern for day trading, not an okay pattern for swing trading. But uh, again, that's the process. I'm looking for pink dots, and if I see a pink dot, I check the pattern. If I like the pattern, I buy the stock. All right, I didn't do any swing trades today. Um, I didn't really like any of the patterns as they shaped up. So now let's talk about how you make stock trading a career. Uh, I, I love stock trading as a career. The, the income potential, in my mind, is better than any other uh, thing you can do. In fact, the highest, peop highest paid people in the world are traders. Uh, they dwarf any other profession by a huge margin. The most successful traders in the world are big hedge fund managers who are making, you know, one, two billion dollars. That's billion with a B in a single year. Uh, there's traders, you know, working inside a, a firm that are still making 40 or 50 million dollars a year and not even running the, the big hedge fund. So uh, the highest paid people in the world are, are traders. But let's be reasonable. Most of us aren't going to get to that level. You have to manage a, a large amount of money to do that. But as a trader, you can still sit in your house. You can live anywhere that there's an internet connection and um, trade. And that's what I think makes it such a desirable thing to do. But you shouldn't be um, you know, disillusioned by the fact that there's very little barrier to entry into trading. And somehow that makes it seem easy. The fact that anyone can open a brokerage account, that really anyone can trade, doesn't mean that everyone should trade. Most people don't take the time to gain the knowledge, define the strategy before they execute. A lot of people just say, hey, trading looks easy. I read a book on how to read charts. I read, uh, you know, I, I watched a couple of videos. I'm ready to trade. And it's not that simple. Trading, I shouldn't say it's not that simple. Trading is simple, but it is not easy. And so if you're going to trade, please take the time to learn, whether you learn it from me or learn it from someone else or teach yourself, but do not start trading until you have proven to yourself that you have the knowledge and the strategies to do it properly. Because if you don't do that, you may get lucky in the short term. You might make some fast money in the short term because the market is hot, but in the long term, you'll go broke. And I, I tell all of my students this. I give them a very um, specific process to go through before they start trading and risking their money because our number one goal, and you see under execute there, our number one goal is to preserve our capital. If you, if you lose all your money in the market, you're out of business. And so when I have my students uh, go through my program, once they're ready, once they've gained their knowledge and they have the strategies understood, the first step is to not to trade with real money, but to trade on our simulator. I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars building a simulator that allows you to practice without risking any money. And if you can't make money in the simulator, you're definitely not going to make money in the real market. And so make money in the simulator first, then start risking real capital. But realize that when you start risking real capital, you also have emotion in play. And it's so important to keep that emotion in check by managing risk properly. And that's why a big part of what I teach is risk management. You have to have some flexibility when you're trading. I don't necessarily do the same strategy all the time. You know, in my active trader course, I teach, 
I don't know, five or six different strategies because sometimes conditions are not great for a particular strategy. Uh, simple swings today, they, there was nothing going on, but the intraday pullbacks worked pretty good. So that was the strategy that worked today. And you have to be flexible and adapt to the market as, it, as things happen. A lot of people think that, um, well, well and, and really in most things, if you work hard, you'll be successful. Let me tell you how working hard works in trading. You have to work hard to learn. Okay, so to, you know, if anyone takes my course, you should expect to have to work hard for a little while to learn it. You have to work hard to be disciplined. You have to work hard to be focused. But there are times when you're trading that it is best to be lazy. Today was one of those days, if you were trading the simple swing strategy, Today was a good day to be lazy because it just wasn't giving us a lot of action. The market was very quiet today. It was okay for the intraday pullback play strategy, which is the one we talked about. But, you know, this week in general has been kind of a, a week when you don't want to work too hard. Now, that doesn't mean you don't work. It just means you don't work hard to try and uncover a trade that isn't there. You know, good trades, we, once you learn my rules, the good trades are or should be obvious. You shouldn't have to work really hard to find them because if you're working really hard to find them, you might be uncovering marginal trades. All right. Another thing to um, consider when you are uh, starting a business and trading is, is how you're going to set yourself up uh, from a tax structure, from a business structure. If you make trading your career, um, the government doesn't give you the capital gains exemption that you get if you're just you know, investing as a sideline, trying to manage your retirement portfolio. So I'm a professional trader. I don't get the 50% capital gains exemption that a person who's managing their you know, retirement savings would get. And so that means it's beneficial to set myself up as a corporation because the corporate tax rate is lower than the personal tax rate. Plus, I can write off you know, my internet feed, my trade station fees, my um, any education that I might buy, programming fees that I pay for programming um, trade station, my internet connection I write off, so my telephone bills, my cable bill. You know, I can write off a lot of different things against my income from trading. And so um, you need to think about those things if you're going to make the leap to becoming a professional trader. Now, if you haven't started trading yet, you don't really need to worry about this right away. Wait until you're becoming successful because there's a bit of a lag until you have to set yourself up as a business. But I want everyone to be aware that if you are going to become a pro trader, make it a business, you should be aware of, of some of the tax implications. Now, I'm not a tax accountant. I, I'm trying to paint for you the broad strokes, but really seek the advice of a, of a tax professional or an accountant or something to you know, explain those things and help you set yourself up. Um, because I didn't do that when I started, and I ended up in my first year when I, when I made a lot of money, I ended up paying way more tax than I should because I hadn't set myself up properly. So I'd like to give that little heads up for people. Uh, tools, things like TradeStation, uh, the Stock Scores website, those are the only two tools I use. I don't use any other uh, tools out there, just TradeStation and Stock Scores. But that doesn't mean that you won't use other tools. I mean, you can teach yourself how to do this and develop your own methods. Um, using my method, you don't need more than those two things. And in fact, if you're not going to really be an active day trader, TradeStation isn't necessarily something you need either. Um, but as I said, it does, I think, help you make more money uh, as a swing trader. All right, now how do you learn this? Well, I taught myself. I developed and tested my own strategies. It took me about eight years before I um, found real success. I mean, I did okay in the first eight years, but I wasn't making, you know, great money until about eight years in. And a lot of the lessons I learned were just, you know, not knowing myself, not knowing how I reacted to um, that my emotional attachment to money and my fear of loss and all those sorts of things. So I've, I've done all that, made all those mistakes. And a lot of my strategies and processes are built around overcoming those things so that I can help you avoid doing the mistakes that I, I wasted thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on. Um, you know, even when I develop a new strategy, I developed a new strategy over the last, say, year or so, I probably lost $20,000 testing that strategy 
with real money um, before I release that strategy to my students. So I'm talking about the wave strategy. You know, I tested it and I fine tuned it and I thought I had it working right. And then it wasn't working right. And I had to start over or not start over, but develop some new rules in that process. The losses I incurred were, I'm going to say conservatively $20,000 and quite possibly even more than that. Not to mention the thousands of dollars I spent on programming fees and that sort of thing. So all of that stuff I've done and I share that with a relatively small group of people. I actually don't want to teach lots of people. I mean, there's, you, you can go on the internet and find guys who are, who are their primary business is teaching people how to trade. And I really question whether they actually trade themselves because they're teaching a new group of people every weekend. You know, I only teach people twice a year. I don't want a lot of students. I want enough students that I can, you know, cover the cost to run stock scores, uh, trade scores. I mean, it costs a lot for data. It costs a lot to build these things. So I want enough uh, students to justify all that work and the costs that come with that. Um, but I'm not interested in, you know, teaching a thousand people a year because I don't really want that many people to know how I do this. So. Uh, in, in a typical year, I might teach 100 people, and every year I teach less and less. I used to teach more. Uh, nowadays, I teach fewer and fewer. So if you want me to teach you how to do it, no problem. You just purchase my course. I think the price is reasonable given, um, you know, what it would cost you to do it yourself. Uh, but that's for you to decide. There's other people out there teaching. A lot of them will say, oh, you know, you take my first course, it's $500, but then down the road, they're saying, well, now you have to take this level and now you got to do this course. And pretty soon you're into it for ten or twenty thousand um, dollars. You know, if you take my active trader course, there's no higher level. I, I suppose you can do mentorship if you want one on one coaching. But um, I don't have you know what you see. What I talk about today is what I what I do. There's no more to it than that. So we have uh, the investor course and the active trader course. If you want to day trade and swing trade, the active trader course is the one you want to do. If you want to have me teach you how to invest better than the investor course, all of these courses start with the foundation. That's the theory. You don't just do this and not do one of these. Like this is kind of the, the prerequisite to do these things. So you learn this material, take you a couple weeks, and then you start learning the strategies. And um, whether you focus on investor strategies or active trader strategies, that's up to you. Anytime you buy my course, I also send you my introductory book called The Mindless Investor. It kind of gives the broad overview of my approach to the market, a lot of the theory behind why it works. I talk about why guys have won Nobel Prizes for some of the, some of the uh, theories that I was doing um, 15 years ago and explain why it's so important to understand those theories. So that's all taught in the Mindless Investor book. Then you do the how to read chart patterns, risk management, and stuff like that. And then you learn my strategies in those particular uh, course uh, modules. So as I've shown in past webinars, we have an education center on stock scores. It's all online. Online, there are written lessons, videos explaining the written lessons, assignments to make sure you understand and practice this stuff. And then finally, a test to make sure you understand that stuff. And that's all online. If you purchase my course now, you will have instant access to it. It's all automated. Um, you don't have to wait for us to turn it on and like that. Once your, your transaction goes through on the website, you get instant access. So how do you become a Stock Scores Investor? Well, you take the Stock Scores Investor course. As I said, it's all online. You get access to everything online, plus my position trading strategies. If you want to do the investor training, you get access to the foundation and the investor material. You get access to the market scans on stock scores um, where you search with our tool. And I, I'm not going to show that tonight because I've done it in past webinars, um, but you can go back and watch those webinars. I think this is the most important thing, email support from me. As you go through the material or even six months down the road, when you're doing a market scan and you're not sure whether you know, Suncor meets the requirements of the stock score simple strategy, you know, fire me an email. I'm, I'm happy to help my students do that kind of learning. I, I, I want people to be successful, so um, I'm happy to answer your questions. With the course cost, which is, I'll show you the cost in a moment, it's $2,495. With the course fee, you get six months access to the tool on stock scores. Uh, and then after that, you renew that at $300 a year. The reason I'm charging $300 a year for that tool is because 
it's expensive for data. Like I have to pay the exchanges for data. I got to have a data provider manage the data. I got to host the website. That I'm not. We're not making money on that three hundred dollars a year. That's just to keep the website up and running. The website's been up for sixteen years. Um, I don't intend to go anywhere. It's uh, you know it it pays for itself, and you don't have to worry about things disappearing. Now, if you want to be an active trader, basically the same process. You do all your online learning. Uh, you get access to the education center. But in addition to the investor material, because the active trader does include the investor course, I want to emphasize that, it does include the foundation course. It, you're getting everything. And the main difference is that you also get my day and swing trading strategies and my indicators for TradeStation. Okay, so there's an extra cost for the Active Trader course because you're getting more strategies and you're getting access to that TradeStation code that puts in the pink dots and the blue dots and other, there's a bunch of other stuff that I haven't shown you. Um, now the Active Trader course, again, email support from me. I highlighted it on this slide because it is so important to uh, when you're learning to run your stock picks past me. I want you to email me once in a while saying, you know, here's three stocks that I think think met the wave strategy today and I'll tell you whether you did it right or not and most people aren't fussy enough and with a little bit of feedback from me you can you know really uh, steepen your learning curve again you get three months or probably six months access to stock scores renewable at three hundred dollars a year and you get my real-time indicators and I'm updating these indicators all the time uh, someone who took my course two years ago would be using different indicators today than they were using then because I'm always doing updates in addition, and I do this uh, once or twice a year, so coming up in June, I'm going to complement all of the online trading with live teaching as well. So Saturday, June 4th, from 9 till 12, we're going to review the foundation material as a group. I'm going to walk you through all of that stuff, uh, all the theory basically. It take us usually three hours. And then, starting Monday, uh, during the day, for the first two or three hours of the day, Monday to Thursday, I'm going to trade live. I'm going to do it slower so I can teach you stuff. I won't be, you know, going my normal speed because uh, it would be too hard to understand. So I, I go a little slower. We're going to do one strategy per day. On the last day, we'll do all of them and uh, just teach you the process, show you how I look at stocks, why I would take one stock and not another. And then in the evenings for an hour, for those who take the investor course or the active trader course, um, you get these one hour market sessions where we're going to do market scans together. So we'll run a market scan. I'll make you, you know, look at the charts and pick the ones that you would pick. And then I'll tell you which ones I would pick. And we'll talk about why some were good, why others were better, that sort of thing. So it's a real valuable application oriented learning process. And as I said, I don't do that very often. So this one's coming up June 4th for the foundation and then the 6th to the 9th for the live analysis session. If you purchase the investor or active trader course before May 31st, you will get that live bonus training for free. Okay, when I used to do this live, I charged people $500 more than what I'm charging now. So basically, you're getting that live training for free, um, provided you, you know, register before May 31st. So again, there's all the dates and times. This video or this webinar is being recorded. You can come back to all the detail later if you want. Costs, these are all in Canadian dollars. Investor course, $24.95. This includes the foundation. Okay. And the active trader course, $34.95. And this includes the foundation and the investor. So with the active trader, you get everything. If you have no interest in day or swing trading, don't do the active trader. If you think you might one day want a day or swing trade, it may be worth considering because when you upgrade, you pay the difference plus $250. So if you do this now and then down the road, you want to upgrade to the active trader, you're going to pay a $1,250 upgrade fee. If you took my investor course two years ago and you want to upgrade today on the Active Trader, it's going to be $1,250. You can do it right online. Just log in to Stock Scores and it'll have it all set up for you there. And um, you're going to get the live training as well uh, included with the upgrade fee. So uh, I'm going to take a few questions. I'm actually going to 
uh, take some questions, but also just do some quick market analysis because there's something important happening in the market right now that I want everyone to know. Um, but I'll just pop up this poll really quickly. I do this every webinar. If you um, uh, bear with me for just a moment, I, I've got big screens in front of me. You only, you're only seeing my laptop screen, but I've got some other ones running. It takes a while to move my mouse across it. So, so there's the poll. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I'm going to show you in just a moment uh, what's going on in the market and why it's kind of important to keep an eye on what happens in the next few days. But if you have any interest in getting an email from me in the next couple of days about the course, um, I don't bug you a lot. Don't worry, I'm not going to spam you endlessly. But uh, just answer yes to the question, or if you're already on the list, just let me know, and I won't have to add you again. If you say no, great, no, no problem. No, I don't have hard feelings. I won't email you anything. All right, so I'll just let everyone answer that. Um, I'm going to put up my email address in a moment. It's tylerb at stockscores.com. If you have any questions, you can email me. If um, you want to register for the course, you can do that anytime between now and May 31st and get the, uh, the free bonus. And the address is stockscores.com slash learn. I'll take uh, this poll down now. Thanks if you answered that. And if you're watching this as the video because you missed the presentation for whatever reason, no problem. You can send me an email if you want to uh, get the email on, on the upcoming class. But really the easiest thing to do, because there's tons of information on this page, whoops, is um, go to this address right here, stockscores.com slash learn. That's the kind of the key part. And it's got, I think, three or four different videos. It's got some written material. Uh, what's contained in the course, what's included, the pricing. And if you log into the page, like let's say you took, you know, a course in the past, if you log in, it'll tell you what it costs to upgrade. Now, if you've already um, bought the course in 2016, you're getting that live training for free. I haven't sent out any emails yet, so I've had a few people emailing me wondering how they register for the live training in June. If you bought the course in 2016, you're already registered, and I will send you you know, the details of what we're going to do June 4th and 6th to the 9th um, next week. All right. So, uh, and if you're wondering what the price is, like I see Monica asking a question, so it's $12.50 plus the live training for free if I buy before May 31st. Assuming you've taken the investor course, yes, that's the upgrade fee. If you've never taken any course and you're paying you know, either $24.95 or $34.95, um, how can you use stocks? Can you use stock scores to day trade? You can. Um, there's a scan on stock scores called Day Trader, which will allow you to. I don't have my my screen open. Um, which will allow you to build your watch list that way. The only problem is you miss the entry signals in the first 40 minutes or so. After later in the day, you'll catch most of them. Uh, you still need a real time platform though. So, I, I mean, I think you'll just make a lot more money if you are trading with. Um, with TradeStation, but if you don't want to incur the cost because you only want to trade a few days a week, there is some videos on the stock scores um, area that will teach you um, how to uh, use stock scores for day trading as well. All right, now I wanted to just do a little market analysis. Oh, there's a few more. I got so many questions rolling in. I'm missing some of them because they're scrolling up here. Just bear with me. Um, do I change my exit strategy if the SPY is relatively bullish or bearish during the day or just follow the bars? No, I don't really let the what the market is doing affect my exit strategy unless the market itself is being very abnormal. So if we're having a huge sell-off day or a really strong buying day, well, on a really strong buying day, I might be more patient with my winners. On a really bad day for the market, I might be um, less patient. So, but but most of the time that's not a factor because most of the time the market's normal. Um, is the pink dot a new indicator you developed recently? That's the active, or pardon me, the action candle indicator. I probably developed that a year and a half, two years ago. So it's not really new. Um, I'm not going to review any of my trades today just because I'm running out of time, gone way over. Uh, I did some of those in, in previous webinars. So you can go back and take a look at those. Um, if you missed the live trading 
training from June 6th to 9th will be recorded. Yes. All of those sessions that I'm doing on June 4th and then June 6th to the 9th, those will all be recorded. So you can watch them if you miss them, but you can also watch them 20 times because, you know, some of this stuff is, um, you know, moving quickly and, um, you know, it's nice to be able to watch it again and again. Um, would an active trader be considered a success with 100% annual return? Yeah, absolutely, that's success. Um, you know, the percentage return you get depends a lot, on, a lot on how much money you're trading with. The more money you have, the harder it is to make it all work. In other words, it's harder to trade with $10 million than with $10,000. Um, with that said, and I understand why people ask me this question because people want to figure out they can justify the price of the course and that sort of thing. But it's really, really dangerous to go into trading thinking about the money. You have to go into trading thinking about preserving your capital, not making money. And the more you focus on wanting to make money, the less likely you will be to succeed. So I, I, I totally understand why everyone wants to know how much can I make, how much can I make. But that's really the wrong way to look at it. You have to think about um, how long is it going to take me to learn? For most people, it's a few months to become, you know, reasonably good at, uh, at active trading. Um, you know, you can get through the material in two weeks. So it's not complicated, but you need to practice. Uh, you know, you can, you can easily make a million dollars a year trading in the stock market. That's more than most professions. But should it happen in two weeks? Don't expect that. That's not reasonable. You don't become a lawyer in two weeks. You don't become a doctor in two weeks. You don't become a professional hockey player in two weeks. If you want to learn how to trade and you want to make it your career, it's going to take time to learn. It won't take you, um, you know, as long as it takes to become a doctor. You know, what is a doctor? Seven, eight years? It's not, although that's how long it took me, but I was teaching myself. Um, but you need to have some reasonable expectations going in. So what I want people to come into it with the expectation is you're striving to make 10 RR per week. Okay, so let me just get to a screen here. So if I'm going to try and make 10 RR per week, that's 10 reward for risk. As a general rule, for every um, for every dollar you're going to risk, you need 100 times that in capital. So if you're going to risk $100 per trade, you're going to need probably $10,000 in capital which means in a week, if you're risking $100, you're trying to make $1,000 a week, all right? So if you wanna make $5,000 a week, you need to be trading with, uh, you need to be uh, risking $500, which means you need to have $50,000 in capital. Now, I want now everyone to forget about this, okay? Because that's focusing on the money. I just forget about it. Now. When you start trading, what you're going to do, if you follow my approach, is you are going to start trading with zero dollars. Okay, easy. You don't have to have any money to start. You're going to trade in my simulator, and you're not going to trade with a penny until you've made 10 RR in the simulator. Then you're going to start trading with very low risk. Call it $50 of risk per trade, which means if you lose, on a trade, you're going to lose 50 bucks. You could, I could have some slippage, um, but you know, a relatively small amount. And that's going to take $5,000 of capital to do that. All right. Once you've made 10 RR at that level, you've basically made $500, right? Well, now you can up your risk to $100. But if you don't yet have $10,000 of capital, you might stay at the $50 risk tolerance until you've made enough money to be able to trade with hundred dollars worth of risk. Okay, so obviously if you have a million dollars of capital today, you can start trading with, you know, $10,000 of risk per trade. That would be a really dumb thing to do because you don't have any experience yet. So even for the person that has a million dollars of capital, I want you to start trading with zero dollars. And then once you've made 10 RR, you're going to make a very minor dent in your million dollars because you're only going to be trading with $50 of risk using $5,000 of your capital. Now, the nice thing about this is that if you trade with some real money, I'm going to erase some of this stuff here. 
Oh, it's not letting me, here, I'll erase some of this. Let's say you, um, you've got a million dollars of money, of capital in your brokerage account, but you're only trading with $50. Let's say you're a complete disaster because you're emotional, and although you made 10 RR in the simulator, when you actually trade with real money, you lose 10 RR. What are you down? You're down 500 bucks. It's not going to hurt you, right? Because you've got a million dollars of capital. Even for a person that's got $5,000 of capital, $500 isn't the end of the world. It's not, you're not going to lose your house or, you know, something like that. Um, and that's the way I want people to approach trading. It takes time to get to the point where you're making good money because you're basically always stepping up a little risk tolerance ladder. You start with zero capital and then you and then you make a step up once you've made 10 RR and you're now you're at $50. And then you make another step up and you're at $100. And another step up, you're at $200. Then $300. Now, if you're really good at learning and you're disciplined and you follow my approach, this can be a very steep stairway. But for some people, that stairway might be really flat because it takes some time to learn. And they may even go down a couple steps. But at least when you're going down a couple steps using this method, you're either using money you've already made from previous steps up, or you're dipping into a very small amount of your a, a proper capital. Okay? So, there, you know, you can go, there's, there's lots of people teaching people how to trade in the market. They drive me crazy because they are give you these high-pressure sales approach. They tell you you're going to make a million dollars. They show pictures of them driving around in Lamborghinis. And um, and I think it's a really irresponsible way to teach people about trading. It's unrealistic and it's dangerous. And most people that take those courses go broke. So, I mean, obviously I have, I'm talking my own book here, but I don't want people to blow themselves up. So that's why I want you to be realistic about this. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions. How does Thinkorswim compare with TradeStation? I've never used Thinkorswim, but I don't believe it can program like TradeStation can. So I, I think Thinkorswim is good in terms of what they package in it, but it, you, you can't use my indicators in Thinkorswim. Um, there's a few stock questions. I'm not going to do stocks tonight because uh, this presentation is already getting kind of long here. What's our time? Yeah, we're already past an hour. Um, looking at this as a, as a career change, would you recommend private active trading course versus the active trader that is upcoming? Previously, okay. So... In the past, I've done mentorship for people. It's it's quite a bit more expensive because you're getting one-on-one -on -one coaching from me every week um, for an hour. And it's, you know, a great way to learn because you have me holding your hand. I'm not going to be doing any mentorship through the summer. Um, so that's not really an option now. However, what I may do in the fall, and it really will depend on whether people are interested in this. So if you are interested in this, send me an email saying, you know, put me on the list down the road if you do this. So right now, mentorship costs seven thousand four hundred ninety-five dollars. Okay, if you've already taken the um, active trader course at thirty-four ninety-five, you're just paying the four thousand dollar difference. Okay, um, what I find when I do when I do mentorship with people is that ninety percent of the questions I'm being asked and the things I'm showing people are the same. So if I teach ten people mentorship. 90% of what I'm showing them is the same for everyone because everyone has the same questions, same issues in learning, same, you know, problems setting up trade station, that sort of thing. So what I think I may do in the fall is do what I call small group mentorship where I do webinars like this with a smaller group of people, maybe cut the cost of the mentorship in half because it's more efficient for me. So instead of paying, you know, $74.95, you pay $54.95 or a $2,000 upgrade to go from active to uh, mentorship. Um, and that way I can, you know, maybe teach five or 10 people at once. We have a, every Tuesday night at, at uh, a certain time or every Tuesday after the close, I teach you for an hour and then I give you some homework to do for the week. And then the next week we come back for another hour and we do that for four or six months. I, I don't know exactly the format, but that's something that I'm contemplating. So uh, right now mentorship isn't available because I, I don't want to be um, doing it through the summer. And I've got a few students now that I'm sort of wrapping up with. Um, but that may be something I do in the fall. So if you think that's a good idea, I haven't really asked anyone if it's a good idea yet. So if you think it's a good idea, fire me an email. If you think it would be better to do one-on-one -on -one mentorship at a higher cost, tell me that too. I mean, I'll do what people want. Um, I, don't, I don't mentor too many people, but something I may do. 
Okay, and you, I, I did say I was going to talk about the market. So, I will stop talking so much about these questions, and I will figure out where the heck my mouse is on the screen here. And I'm just going to pull in um, the stock scores website into my screen here and just show you some things on the chart because it's quite important what's going on. So I'm going to bring up the chart of the S&P 500. Now I've been talking about this in my Market Minutes video um, which is on YouTube every week and this is a very important uh, thing going on. So we are right now at long-term resistance and if I make this a three-year weekly chart you can see that the market if I was to draw a line across these tops, this is exactly where we are sitting right now. And I put out a, a tweet earlier in the week that said, you know, the market's going to probably rally to $210 on the SPY and then it's going to get stuck. And today we got stuck. The market went nowhere, totally dead trading today. Um, very low volume. You can see the volume. Look at how low the volume was today. Brutal. Um, and that's because the market has rallied into this resistance zone and now the market's trying to figure out if you know it's justified in breaking out of this trading range now if we look at a shorter term chart let's do the 15 day you can see how quiet it was the last day and a half and if i make this a 30 day chart <clears throat> you can see basically we've risen up to the congestion here so the market is stuck right now and it's at a very critical point and all that matters to the market right now is what is the Fed going to do? Are they going to raise interest rates or are they not going to raise interest rates? The bull market that we've had since 2009 has been driven by monetary policy. Low interest rates, stimulus from the Fed in terms of printing money, um, bond buying programs, all that stuff. That is the number one thing that has driven the stock market in the last eight years, not eight years, six years. Okay, there's, there's the bull trend. Now that the market's starting to think about interest rates going up, look what's happened. We had our first talk about interest rate raise last summer, and then we had it again on the heels of the December rate increase. We had a sell-off going into the new year, took us all the way down, kept bouncing off of the 183 zone or so. So I'm concerned right now that we may roll over again, but I actually lean toward that not happening. I'm going to say on a probability basis, probably 60% chance the market breaks through this resistance zone and goes higher and a 40% chance we roll over and go lower. Either way, the odds aren't great, right? So you need to keep a real close eye on, on the trading action every day, um, particularly on the chart of the S&P to see what happens. Right now, the market is breaking a flag pattern, which is a bullish sign. If you look at this weekly chart, I'll, I'll make this a little less short term here or a little less long term, I guess, more short term. Um, right now we have a, a flag pattern on the weekly breaking through that and it's trying to get through that resistance zone. So there's a real um, focus by the market on what the Fed does. Um, Janet Yellen is getting an award tomorrow as I said at the top from Harvard and she's expected to speak and the world is waiting to hear what she says. Are they going to raise rates or not? I actually don't think the market will mind if interest rates are raised at the next meeting. Uh, the bond market is speculating that there's a 38% chance that the rate, uh, that there will be a quarter point interest rate raise at the meeting in June. Um, and then some say July, because of course you have the whole British vote on exit from the European Union in June. Some say maybe that's a reason for the Fed to hold off. I don't, I don't think they care, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, Real critical time for the market because we could get a lot of volatility in the near term. And volatility, I love volatility. I don't care if the market goes down. I don't care if the market goes up as long as there's volatility. And for the last, you know, four or five weeks, we haven't had a lot of volatility, which makes trading a little bit more of a grind. I love, you know, this sell-off December into February. That's great. And then the rally back from February into the middle of April. That's great. But the last four or five weeks, that grind sideways, that's not so much fun. So um, I think we're going to be coming out of that soon and uh, um, we'll see if it goes up or down. As I said, I lean toward that going up mostly because there's so much bearishness in the market and usually when everyone's bearish, the market does the opposite. So we'll see. I think the, uh, the um, bearish, um, the number of people who are bullish in the market is only about 25% right now 
and that's really low and that's one of the reasons I think the market could break to the upside. All right, so um, hopefully that was helpful and I, um, as I said, I do a Market Minutes video every week. It's on YouTube. Everyone should subscribe to my YouTube channel. Everyone should sub uh, follow me on Twitter. It's all free and uh, I put out good stuff every weekend. I put out comments on Twitter every day or two. So uh, follow me. It's free stuff. And I'll update you on that on that question of whether the market's rolling over or breaking out. That'll be in the YouTube video every week. If you want to um, register for the course, again, you've got until uh, May 31st to do so. The sooner you do it, the sooner you can get into learning the knowledge and get ready for the training the first week of June there. Um, that's the address to go to, stockscores.com slash learn. Sorry. And I'll leave that up for a moment. So I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. Hopefully it was informative. If you have any questions about the upcoming classes, certainly email me. And uh, thank you for using Stocksports. Thank you for joining these webinars. I appreciate your attention. Have a great night, everyone, and trade well.